Hello everyone, Oliver from Scholarcy here. In previous videos, we've talked about how you can source and store new literature using search engines like Google Scholar and PubMed, and how Scholarcy can make this easier for you. In this video, we're going to run through how to screen papers and how Scholarcy makes this much more efficient. In the last study skills video, we talked about how you can use tools like Google Scholar to narrow down your search to more relevant papers by using complex search strings like we've got above. I've copied the same string here so hopefully all of these papers are more relevant and we can get on with our screening process. I've opened up the first paper that I'd like to screen. I chose this one because I read a few of the paper's titles and I found this one interesting. The title's useful, but it doesn't give you the full picture, it doesn't give you any of the information about the methods or what the results contain. To find if the paper actually fits your search criteria, the abstract is quite useful. Traditionally, the abstract will tell you whether or not a paper meets your search criteria and whether you should dive deeper into it or read it in full. It can be a bit hazy sometimes. In those cases, it can be useful to go and read the conclusion. With Scholarcy, however, all you have to do is open up the browser extension and you can go through the Scholarcy highlights, the summary or the synopsis and determine whether or not the paper reaches your criteria much more efficiently. If you like the paper, click Save to Library. If you don't like it, ditch it and move on to the next one. After using the Scholarcy browser extension to screen the paper, I decided to save it to my library. This has opened the flashcard up in a new window where I can go through all of the flashcard sections at my own time. One of the first sections I'll check is the comparative analysis, as this will give me an idea of how much the paper has considered previous work, if they've built on previous research, if their methods are the same or different, and if their findings conflict with something or confirm something. It's a really good way to get a well-rounded picture of where the paper sits within all of the literature. In the study skills video, where we learnt how to source new literature, we set up an RSS feed so that we could automate our literature discovery journey. I've opened this folder and it contains 174 flashcards. This is a lot to screen, but fortunately Scholarcy makes this really, really accessible. I'm going to start by filtering by year. I'm going to do this so that I've got the most up-to-date and relevant research first. And now all I have to do is scroll through and read the title and the headline to pick out any papers that I think are relevant, and I can dive into their flashcards and read the summary and the highlights to screen them further. When you finish screening a paper and you decide that you would like to cite this in the report that you're writing, it can be handy to move it over to a folder that contains only the papers that you'd like to cite. You can do this very easily by clicking on Organise, and then finding the folder you'd like to move it to, clicking onto it, and clicking Move. Just like that, it's been moved over to the folder that you'd like to keep them in, and it's now safe alongside all of the papers that you'd like to cite in your report. So hopefully, by following this guide, you'll now find screening papers much more approachable, and your academic journey will go a lot smoother. If you have any questions, however, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching.